Welcome back. Video number three, the seven steps to effective time management. So let's have a look at these seven steps straight away. First step is choosing the six most important things. We talked about an overzealous to-do list with 20, 30, 50 items on it. And I've, I've got to-do lists right now that have got at least 30 items on them. So what do I do to avoid that feeling of overwhelm? It's very, very simple. I choose the six most important things on the list. I prioritize the task list that will create the most important results. That's things that are important and urgent, things that are just important. Next, things that are urgent but not so important. And finally, everything else. Now, <clears throat> if you look at this, we've got importance and urgent. That's, that makes sense. And then we go on to important things, not urgent things. It's really important to prioritize things into achieving the goals and outcomes that you want. If something's urgent, but it's really not important, then actually it isn't that urgent. It may be urgent for someone else. It may be something that there's a deadline for, and you may miss the deadline for it. But if it isn't important to you, then it doesn't matter. Focus on the things that are really important. And then focus on those top six things only. So you've got your list, you've got all 30 items on it, make it into a list of things, number them one to 30 in, in terms of importance, and then just take the six top things and focus only on those. Create a new list for today of the top six things. That's the first step of time management and it's really, really important. Step number two, decide how much time. For each of the top six things you must work on, you've got to decide how much time to dedicate to each one, okay? Now, it could be you've got a project that's important and urgent, and it's eight hours of work, and it's really, really vitally important. But really try not to allocate more than six hours in any one day, okay? Really, really important that, because you've got to allow for overruns and interruptions, because even with the most effective um, systems for avoiding interruptions, you do need to do other things during your day other than just work on this one project, whether it's correspondence, whatever it is. S step number three is schedule when. Now, in schedule when, what we're going to do is take the times that we've allocated and you're going to decide when in the day each task should be done. Start with your least favorite or the most important thing depending on the urgency and all that kind of thing. We're going to come back to this in another step because this needs uh, honing down a little bit further. Always allow 15 to 30 minutes between each task. This allows you to file things away, allows you to get the file out for the new tasks you've got to work on. It allows you to close things down properly so that you actually clear your desk, shift things out of the way, avoid the clutter. Allow 30, 15 to 30 minutes. It also allows for overruns and things like that. Schedule when you'll check emails and correspondence. You're going to be getting emails during your day. That, that's part of um, you know, anybody's working life. You get emails as time goes by. So schedule exactly when you're going to check your emails. And don't have your emails open all the day. This is part of avoiding interruptions, and we're going to come back to that in a moment. And schedule when people can interrupt you. Now, you can't usually, well, not some people can, but a lot of people can't have a situation where Nobody can interrupt them for any reason, no matter what, because some people are managers who are in very important positions who do need to be contactable by their subordinates from time to time with things that are important. So schedule a time every day where you say there's half an hour or there's an hour every day, two o'clock in the afternoon, where I'm, I'm available for God a minute meetings. And people can literally walk in and if it's important, they can interrupt you from whatever you're doing at that time. Could be that that's the time when you've scheduled to do some correspondence, it could be a time when you're working on a project that doesn't require 100% focus. Whatever you've scheduled at that time, they're allowed to interrupt you. Or you could literally just have a blocked out time of day where you have got a minute meetings because you know people are gonna be interrupting you. I know when I first implemented this, it was an absolute revelation to me having these set times. In the first few days, I had loads of people coming in. And sometimes I would say to them, well, actually, that can wait till the weekly meeting, which we would always um, have. And other times, they would have an important thing. But after a few days, I noticed they started solving all their own problems without actually coming to see me, necessarily, on those days. Step number four, first things first. This is one thing we uh, talked a little bit about just in step three. Ensure you focus your time on the most important things in the day. This is really, really important. 
but then schedule the things you least like doing first. Why? Why schedule? It could be you've got something that's really, really important. You've got this horrible job that's also important, but the other one's really important. Yeah, you've got to make a judgment call, but if at all possible, if you know that you can do it, schedule the one you hate the most first. This ensures that the day gets better as it goes on. I, it really, really is psychologically very, very important about keeping you on track. You will work harder to get to the things you like than to get, uh, than to, get to the things you hate. Okay, it's really important. I'll say that again. You'll work harder to work towards the things you like than you will to walk towards things you don't like. So focus on getting the things you dislike done out the way first, and then you get your day gets better as you go by. Step number five: touch it once. Again, we talked about this in the Killers of Time Man. If you touch it, act on it. Whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is. Reply to it. Forward it on to someone else, file it, schedule when you're going to work on it. That could be a valid thing to do. Delegate it to somebody else. Whatever it is, work on it. We talked in the Killers of Time Management about, and again, touching things more than once, rereading the emails, rereading letters, and re listening to voicemails. Avoid that like the plague. If you're going to touch it, make sure you've scheduled enough time to take an action with it, whether that is to schedule when you're going to do the proper action, to write notes about it so that when you do schedule it, whatever it is, make sure you've scheduled it. Never put it back where you got it from. I've seen this too often, people stuffing a letter back in an envelope, put it back in their in-tray, don't do it. Act on it, schedule it, decide when you're going to do something with it, and take the action. Mark it as well. Mark, if it's a piece of paper, mark it as actually been read and file it. Even if it's filing it into the folder to take action later, make sure you've made a note of what you're going to do and put it, put it aside. Step number six, dump it. Really, really simple. 80% of the information that is filed is never ever act accessed again. Very, very simple. It cuts the clutter. Get rid of it. Store only that which is necessary for your business or your life. Okay. I, do, I used to do this a lot. I used to store everything and uh, it, it really isn't an efficient way of using your time. Dump anything that you have not needed for six months, unless there's a specific need, reason to keep it. It could be an insurance policy, your passport of course, but the most correspondence doesn't need to be kept more than a couple of months. And If it's more than six months old, just get rid of it. And really the one thing you want to ask yourself every time you pick up a piece of paper is, will it kill me to throw this away? Because often you can get it again if you really needed it anyway. But if, it, if you don't need it, get rid of it. Okay, legal documents, yeah, keep them. If it's on a particular project, it's something of uh, high importance to the business, yeah, keep it. You need to. But get rid of everything else. Step number seven, organize it. This is really, really important. This, this can change the way you run your business. It can change the way you run your life. It can change the way you organize everything from the tiniest things right the way up to major parts of your business. Create systems and habits that create predicted results. <sighs> Look at McDonald's. McDonald's is a multi-billion dollar organization that's spread right the way across the world. And it is entirely run by young people with absolutely no previous business experience. The entire organization globally run by mostly teenagers as their first jobs. Why? Because McDonald's has a system in place to create exactly known outcomes regardless. Organize your files, your emails, your diary, everything. So make sure you organize your day on a regular basis to get, your, get everything done and know where everything is. Right down to where your keys, your car keys. You know, I've seen this with people, where are my car keys? And they're searching around the house trying to find their car keys. Have a hook, have a place, a set place that no matter where you are, no matter what happens, your keys are always in that place. Your passport, have a particular drawer where you keep your passport. Anything that you're going to need, your insurance documents, everything, file it, know where it is, know where exactly everything is, and then you won't have a problem. Place your keys, passport, etc. in a fixed location. So there you have it, the seven steps to effective time management. And if you implement these seven steps in your life, I guarantee 100% you will see a massive 
massive improvement in your effectiveness. Now, if you want to go in more depth, this is where I'm going to talk about the book. But the book's not just talking about the seven steps to time management. It's also about taking it a lot further. As I said at the end of the last video, we're going to cover procrastination in massive detail, really going deep into it. And there's one area of procrastination I really want to talk about, and that's disengagement reluctance. Um, this one form of procrastination is a killer. You don't even know you're procrastinating. You think you're on purpose. You think you're moving forward. You really think you're really hitting the ground running. I've known people be in this state of procrastination for as long as four years without ever knowing they were procrastinating until they really got to the end and saw that they completely wasted those four years and they can never get them back. I've seen it. It's happened to me. I learned this lesson the hard way and I really want to make sure you learn it as fast as possible. Also about overextending your energy. So let's move on. Taking it further, as I discussed before, we're going to go through planning systems. We're going to go through inevitability thinking. Massively, massively powerful. Making the outcome of your goals, your desires, absolutely inevitable always. You can never fail with this type of thinking. And the power of linking goals together. We're also going to go through the magic multiplier, as I said before, the mental accelerator that will drive you forward. Also, you know, if you're going to do time management, chances are you want to use it in your workplace. We're going to look at implementing the systems in business, how to train teams to do it, and how to guarantee maximum t uptake of the new training, which is really, really difficult to achieve. So, get the book. Now, the book is called Time to Prosper, Stop Dreaming, Start Doing. And I guarantee you 100% this book will make a massive difference to your life. If you implement what's in this book, you will see a 400% 400 increase in your effectiveness guaranteed within a matter of two weeks. I guarantee it. I don't know how much that's worth to you. Is it just about the freedom of time? Is it about being able to get so much more done? Or is it about being able to spend time with your family, having time with your children, having time to really live your life? I don't know what you, that really means to you, but I can guarantee you it's going to be hard to put a price tag on it. But I'm putting a price tag on it. It's just $37. That's it. And I give you my 100% guarantee that if you buy this book, you get it today, and you try it, I guarantee you'll get results. But if you don't get any results and you don't even read the book, that's up to you. Try it for 60 days. If you don't like it, send me back your PayPal invoice and I will hit, click the refund button on you, against your invoice and I will send you that money back straight away, no questions asked, within the next 60 days. So, go get the book now. It's time for you to prosper. Stop dreaming, start doing, and start making the life you truly deserve.